Oh, hi, this is Peter Combs from bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art. And today is uh, Tuesday, uh, December 5th, 2017. And today we're going to take a look at the Christie's auction results from last uh, week uh, in November over in uh, Hong Kong. They had about uh, nine sales. One of them was a single lot uh, catalog. And they had some great examples. And if you come over to the website, if you, those of you that use our website, if you click the Dealers and Auctioneers tab, it'll bring you over here. And here's the Christie's button. And when you click that, it'll pull you over to here and this is where all the catalogs are posted so you can open any one of them at any time we keep them on here there's quite a few at this point that we've uh, accumulated uh, because Christie's takes their catalogs down after the sales are over so it makes going back to browse them unless you have a hard copy almost impossible so uh, we this is sort of a handy tool and uh, there are a number of catalogs we're going to go through. We're not going to go through all of them. We're not going to go through the painting catalog. Uh, but you can do that on your own. But we're going to look at the ceramics and furnitures and scholars' objects and so forth. And uh, if you uh, come over here, this was this is the first catalog we're going to look at. I love this sale. It was Court Studio at Atelier, Chinese works of art and paintings from the Ming Dynasty. And they had some really terrific examples in here. And uh, we'll go through a few of them. And you can come back and uh, you can pull up the price, price results on Christie's if you want and check out the other things. But uh, uh, they had a really good sale. And in the upper right, if you click this little button, it pulls up all the thumbnails for the pages. It makes finding things very, very easy. And the first thing we're going to look at is uh, what uh, I had a couple of favorites in the sale. And this was one of them. It was the uh, big Blanc de Chine de Wah. Uh, Ming Dynasty figure. Here it is. It was 20 inches tall. This was a monster. And it was signed by He Cho Zong. Um, he was a famous uh, 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 Dewa uh, pottery maker, porcelain maker. Um, uh, really did uh, absolutely outstanding work. And uh, these uh, pieces are coming um, into, into heavy favor now in China. They're starting to buy Blanc de Chine. Um, uh, more and more. Ten years ago, there wasn't that much interest in China for these pieces. Now they've suddenly become all all the rage, and uh, this was a just a great example. It sold about 12 years ago at Christie's and uh, uh, did pretty well, but this time around it, it, it did really well. And there's a nice detail of it, uh, beautifully, beautifully modeled uh, all the way down. This is really a gem of a piece. And uh, it was estimated at, uh, let's see here, the estimate on it was uh, uh, 10 to 15 million Hong Kong. And it blew through the high estimate and uh, went for 19 million Hong Kong. If you're not familiar with Hong Kong currency, it's basically eight times uh, that of U.S. currency. So if something sold for $8 million in Hong, in Hong Kong dollars, it works out to roughly 1 million U.S. Um, plus or minus a few bucks, but that's pretty close. And this was a really lovely example. And the next piece that was up that uh, caught my eye um, a few weeks ago was uh, when I first saw these was, uh, if we can get the page to open, here we go. What the heck's going on? There we go. Uh, was this Ming, sorry about the delay, this really great Ming incense burner, gilt, uh, parcel gilt, uh, made by um, uh, Yun Zhan Hu Wen Ming. Uh, he was a, a legendarily famous uh, bronze caster in the late Ming dynasty. Uh, and this was a, a type that he was particularly well known for. There's a similar example in the Palace Museum, and, and I think there's one in the British Museum as well. Just a really great example. They're uh, fairly easy to uh, recognize uh, stylistically uh, for his work. And this one was estimated at three to 500,000 Hong Kong and uh, went through the high estimate again and ended up selling for 562,000, which I think uh, in Hong Kong, uh, which I think was a pretty good buy. These are, these are um, sure to become um, um, uh, extremely uh, uh, popular down the road uh, because uh, uh, it is a named piece and there weren't that many uh, Ming bronze casters that uh, were, were uh, connected by their names to their pieces so this was a really nice one I, I love that and uh, then we're going to slip over here to um, this uh, uh, brush pot uh, this is a r exceptional uh, Han Hua Li, late Ming early Qing Chilong decorated um, in floral form brush pot uh, the wood quality on it was outstanding. The carving was superb. 
all the way around. Uh, just just a great example. Um, as I recall, there was one, it was either in the Verada sale or it was in, in Grace Wu Bruce's uh, new book in her own collection, a, a somewhat similar example. This was a good one, though. And uh, it was estimated at 350 to 450,000 Hong Kong. And it went through that estimate all the way up to 687,000 Hong Kong dollars. Uh, but uh, a, a really great uh, scholar's object. Uh, it was bought um, um, from uh, Susan Chen in Hong Kong in the 1990s. And uh, just a, a lovely example, uh, no, no matter how you look at it. And then we'll move along to this, another piece of, uh, another uh, uh, non-ceramic uh, work with this pair of compound chests. Uh, just a, a terrific pair. They were came from Kola Ma, sold them in the 1990s, and uh, they were just beautiful as far as the color goes. Um, the, uh, they were uh, uh, still retaining their original hardware. They hadn't been over cleaned ever. Uh, the interiors were nice on it. Uh, I suspect these came right out of a Chinese house back then and had been um, held on to and uh, were sold at that time. And uh, these did very well. This chest brought, this pair of chests brought 14 and a half million Hong Kong dollars. That's a good price for a pair of compound chests. And they were, they were lovely. Uh, and then slipping along over to here was one of my favorite things in the sale also with the, this big basin. Uh, it was 27 inches. And what was really unusual about it, it was, it was mark and period of Long Qing period, six character mark. Um, uh, they pretty certain it's of the period, I guess. I don't see why it wouldn't be. And uh, really a great thing. And these are rare. You don't see many Long Qing Mark things because it was only a five-year reign. It was a very, very short reign. And um, this one uh, came from the Captain Clark collection in 1970. And it was estimated at 1.5 to 2.5 million. And uh, it brought 1. I think it was 1.8. 1.8 million Hong Kong which is not a bad price for that. Uh, it's, I realize 1.8 million uh, Hong Kong is a lot of money, but um, uh, you know all of these things are for a lot of money. But this was a, a rare type, uh, extremely rare type, and um, um, you know, uh, in the world of Chinese porcelain today, this was not a, you know, the end of the world. Let's put it that way, okay? And uh, now we're gonna slip into the J.M. Hu collection. Uh, he had the, the monochrome collection that was uh, being sold. Uh, there were not a lot of pieces. This wasn't a large catalog. But what was in it were absolutely outstanding examples. And uh, we'll get right over to them. And uh, here they all are. Uh, as you can see, there aren't that many pieces. But um, for what there were, they were really superb. And we'll start with this one. Um, this was an absolutely outstanding Qinlong um, Guan-type uh, glazed pear-shaped vase. Beautiful uh, a sort of Claire de Lune glaze on this, but uh, J.M. Hu was known for being extremely picky about his pieces, and he wanted perfect color, perfect proportions, perfect everything, and this pretty much nailed it. Uh, it was not a big vase. These are not big. This is a little over eight inches tall, uh, but superbly well potted. Uh, notice the, the slight flaring to the mouth, the way the, the gracefulness of the, uh, of the neck, now it melds into the body and then sort of uh, compresses and into this nicely done, uh, perfectly proportional foot that splays out gently. It was estimated at two to three million Hong Kong, and it made short work of that. It went for 7.9 million, um, which is a, a very good price for that. Uh, but but uh, you know it's a great rarity. So uh, and it came with impeccable provenance. So there you go. And it's been exhibit. This was exhibited in a lot of museums, including the Shanghai Museum. And uh, then we had this, this really fine guan-type glazed uh, U-shaped vase. Also Chin Lung Mark and period. Also, uh, this one was a little smaller than the previous, or a little, almost eight inches, a little under eight. Uh, but just uh, beautifully uh, uh, glazed. Uh, you notice how the high points, the glaze runs a little bit thin here and around the rim the way it should, thickens up in certain spots. And it was estimated at two to three million Hong Kong. And it went through the uh, high estimate and ended up selling for 3.4 million. Um, again, not a surprise. Uh, provenance is everything in these uh, with these collections, and um, uh, the, the similar examples were in the Chow collection as well, which doesn't hurt. <laughs> it's pretty good. And uh, then we're going to get along to the last piece in this sale uh, that we're going to look at was uh, was this. This was my f my favorite in the catalog. Uh, was this really beautiful uh, Yongshen Mark and period uh, uh, peacock uh, feather glazed 
uh, garlic head uh, vase. Um, again, notice the potting was just absolutely superb. Everything is proportional all the way down. Every, every shape, every curve transitions nicely into the next. And uh, the, how the glaze uh, is uh, quite co well contrasted at the top. And then as it flows down the body, it sort of starts to meld. And then it becomes contrasted again in the area of the foot below the, below the body itself. It was just beautiful. And it sold, uh, the estimate was 6.5 to 7.5 million. And it went right away through that. It brought to almost, almost 13 million, 12 point, uh, I think it was 12.9, 12 12.7 million Hong Kong. A uh, really, really lovely example, no matter how you look at it. Uh, just superb. And uh, then we're going to get over here to this catalog. This was, this was a really nice catalog, especially the cover lot. My God, it was a beautiful thing. And this was the important Chinese ceramics and works of art. And uh, we're going to start out with lot 3015, which is uh, this one right here. Um, hold on, we got to click. This one has, gives you the option to search by lot number, which is kind of fun and uh, close that up and to take a look. And here it is. This is a lovely Yongshen uh, Famille Rose, what they call a boneless um, style bowl, um, but uh, just uh, beautifully, beautifully painted, the, the very best of Yongshen painting. Uh, notice the, the, the way the Famille Rose enamels uh, just softly transition from white. Um, the use of negative space, how the white background sort of frames everything and these beautiful yellow flowers. And then I love the leaves, the way the leaves are done. They're almost, uh, uh, you know, done in an impressionist way. They, they sort of blend in. So your eye goes to the butterfly and, and goes, I'm going to pull up this part here, here. Here it is again. Just a uh, beautiful positioning um, of the flowers. Uh, there's a butterfly on the other side that you can't see here. And the foot gently splays out to the meeting the body of the bowl and the proportions of the bowl from the, from the lip down the curve is just absolutely excellent all the way around and uh, the bowl was estimated at two to three million now this is a three inch bowl it's a very small bowl but it was estimated at two to three million hong kong and it went for 2.98 just a hair under the high estimate uh, well worth it uh, a really great example all the way around and then we're going to get over here's another pair of uh, another couple of cabinets we, the, we just saw the compound chests and uh, we're going to take a look at this. This was a pair of, uh, of uh, really beautiful Juan Hali round corner cabinets. Um, just uh, absolutely the best. They were, they were estimated at 9 to 12 million, and they blew through that estimate. They ended up selling for around 36 million Hong Kong. But look at the wood quality on these. The quality of the, uh, of the wood that was selected for the making of these cabinets just absolutely amazing, which is typical sort of a Ming furniture. The end of the Ming period was when they really made their very best furniture and, uh, uh, and the most collected. And uh, here's, here are these cabinets and the, the quality of the wood. Always look at the quality of the wood. Um, they picked the wood uh, for its artistry and the graining of this uh, and the color and the contrast to these uh, rib styles and then these uh, beautiful um, uh, hard pieces of hardware that were mounted on it. Everything is proportional, uh, just lovely. And uh, they did great, they, as you know. They brought 36 million Hong Kong, or roughly um, um, about uh, four and a half million dollars for the pair. Quite excellent, don't you think? And uh, then we're going to get along here. There was a, uh, a robe. Uh, 3028. One of the robes, the, the yellow robe didn't sell. The imperial robe didn't sell, but uh, these did, and uh, this robe did. And uh, let's get over to it. There it is. Um, a really excellent uh, chestnut ground um, uh, gauze robe, uh, probably for a prince. They're speculating it's 18th century Qin Lung period, um, but uh, check out the uh, quality of the work on this robe. Um, the detail is exceptional, um, beautifully done dragons, and uh, it was estimated, uh, uh, it had a pretty good estimate on it, four to six hundred thousand uh, pounds Hong, uh, Hong Kong dollars, and it ended up selling for six hundred and twenty-six thousand, or um, um, uh, uh, roughly, how much is that, six hundred twenty-six, well, six hundred twenty-six divided by eight, uh, about eighty thousand dollars. Um, really great looking robe. The yellow robe did not sell, and I'll be interested to know why. 
uh, coming up the road. And then we're going to look at one more of a piece of furniture was this. I thought this was just a very chic looking table. Um, very, uh, very elegant. They call these plank tops um, with pedestal bases for obvious reasons. But it almost looks like Danish modern if you look at it. But it just a beautiful, beautiful table. Estimated at five to seven million. And uh, it, it brought uh, five and a half million Hong Kong. Um, a little, a little bit on the low end of the estimate, but uh, a really great example. Um, uh, uh, Robert Ellsworth uh, uh, had written about these with Nicholas Grindley. Um, this was, these are fairly rare type, obviously, but I just thought they were just very chic, very elegant looking table, and it was a, a pretty good size too. It was uh, 93 inches long, so it was, over, it was just about eight feet long. Nice big table. All right. And then we're going to get down to the cover lot here in just a second. I'm going to scroll down a little here and get the lot number, um, lot 2908. And this was a, a beautiful, um, uh, beautiful, beautiful vase. Uh, there it is. Uh, really uh, terrific. One of these, uh, they call them, sometimes they call them, um, um, it's an amphora vase. Sometimes they refer to these as string vases because of these lines here around the neck. But this is a highly unusual vase, and uh, copper red with underglaze blue, and for it's also uh, you will recognize it's one of the uh, one of the scholar shapes that you often see in peach bloom, um, but here they did it um, uh, in, in this manner with the sp these suspicious symbol yang and yin and and the uh, 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 trigrams, but uh, just a beautiful color and the white on it was just excellent. This is a Yong Chen vase not made in the Kung Shi period like the peach bloom ones were. And it was estimated at 15 to 18 million Hong Kong. It was seven and a quarter inches tall. And it ended up selling for uh, well over its estimate, about 24 million Hong Kong, which is uh, you know roughly three and a half million dollars or so. Uh, just a, a really beautiful example. And uh, when you come here, you can, you can blow it up and look at it. But the proportions of it were excellent. Um, the underglaze blue was great. The use of uh, uh, iron red, you can see how the copper in it turned a little green here and there, which is not at all unusual. It adds to, I think it adds to the charm of the piece. So uh, that did, that did uh, beautiful, uh, beautifully well in the sale. There it is. All righty. And now we're going to mosey along over to the, um, the Yang de Tang collection. Uh, as you recall, the Yang de Tang collection was sold... Uh, uh, the porcelain was sold uh, just about exactly a year ago. That was the one that had the beautiful pair of garlic uh, head uh, Yan Dynasty uh, with iron spot uh, Celadon vases on the cover. And uh, this was the Jade Collection. And uh, they had some absolutely stellar examples, not the least of which was the Kong on the cover here. Um, it's a beautiful example. And we're going to open this up here. And uh, let's see. And we'll start with the Kong. There it is, a nine-tiered um, uh, Liangzhu Jade Kong. Look at the color of this, this vase. Absolutely beautiful. Um, uh, all the way down, this was a nice size one too. It was nine inches tall. Sometimes you see these jades, and uh, these, these Kongs, and there's just one section. Um, but this was a, a big one. It was multi-tiered, nine-tiered, nine and uh, nine inches tall, estimated at three to five million Hong Kong. And uh, it did very well. It brought... Uh, what was the final thing here on this? 8.5 million Hong Kong, roughly a little over a million dollars. Not a big surprise there. This was a terrific example, and um, um, uh, it was acquired in uh, Taipei uh, prior to 1999, according to the, the notes on it. All right, and then the next piece up was this. This was this really crazy looking thing. Uh, I love this. It was a, a jade tooth animal mask. And uh, it almost it almost looks like something out of a, out of a uh, you know out of an internet game modern game these days, but it was beautifully carved, nice color, estimated at three to five hundred thousand uh, Hong Kong, and it just absolutely um, uh, uh, obliterated that estimate. It ended up selling for this ten point nine million Hong Kong. Um, they were a little off. It was Hong Shan culture. But an extremely rare thing, and I think it's just a very cool little carving. It's seven inches wide, sort of a comb-shaped thing, um, but beautifully done. It's, a, they, it's an animal mask ornament, perhaps a hair ornament or something. It had been exhibited in the National Palace Museum. Um, let's blow it up a little. 
um, just uh, absolutely a, a stunning uh, carving uh, all the way along, especially for such an early time. And the color is great, and uh, it did really well, obviously. Um, and the sellers must be a, a bit more than happy about that. All right. And uh, the catalog had a lot of great things, a lot of great amulets and uh, ornaments. And you really should go and check it out if you're into early jade. This was a really good jade collection, and it all did well. That part of the sale, the, the, the sales they did, uh, just took off. And next we come to the Thornton collection. Um, this was uh, uh, some uh, fabulously uh, well done um, uh, enamel pieces. Um, and uh, let's get over here. Uh, and the first piece we're going to take a look at is uh, what is this? This plate. Um, <laughs> Uh, that one. There it is. Uh, a r exceptional, uh, a, a fine Famille Rose peach dish. Yongchen, Mark and period. Uh, but the coloration of this plate was just absolutely stunning. It was about 8 inches diameter, estimated at 7 to 9 million Hong Kong, and it blew through that. It ended up going for um, uh, almost 14 million Hong Kong. But look at the colors. Look at these glowing colors. My goodness. Um, just absolutely the best. The drawing on it was impeccable all the way around with the peaches and the bats. Um, they did these, of course, during the, uh, the, uh, throughout the uh, uh, Chin Lung period as well. Uh, but this, this one was an earlier, an earlier one, and it brought the final price on it was 13.9 million Hong Kong. So there you go. That was a nice thing. And uh, then there was uh, this uh, we, we had seen in the, uh, in the Who collection some really nice monochromes. And here is a really nice pair of monochromes, fine pair of Claire de Lune glaze uh, G form beaker vases, uh, a very unusual form. He had this this particular Thornton had bought almost everything in his collection from Frank Caro, who who took over after C T Lou was gone in the 1950s, and he bought these from him. Uh, just a really great pair, seven inches tall, great color, mark and period, and uh, they did great. They brought two point Two million um, was the was the final price on these, and uh, but a highly unusual form, and especially to have it in a pair, it's really terrific. Um, and you're not going to you, you, I, I I think I've seen this form actually before. All right, and uh, then we get on to the uh, the yellow piece. This was uh, quite lovely. This uh, beautifully done um, uh, uh, Yongshan Markin period, uh, just a, a, a lemon yellow. Um, a chrysanthemum dish, uh, uh, spectacularly well potted, beautifully glazed, also from Frank Caro, six inches in diameter with a 1.8 to 2.8 million Hong Kong estimate. And it ended up selling, yeah, it went way over, this was the one, it went for 5.5 million Hong Kong for this, this dish, for a monochrome, um, which is quite surprising, but a, a beautiful example, all the way around, perfectly potted, and uh, that's, that's a, uh, what you see in these, and um, and then the the the, uh, the the last thing we're going to get to is the uh, we'll open this up is the uh, what is it the Lekong, um there it is the Kong Tang collection, and uh, this was an interesting sale because they, one of the the cover lot didn't sell apparently, which is rather surprising all the way around. I don't quite understand that. Neither did a number of other things, and I'm, I'm curious to hear why. It may be the estimates were too aggressive. Um, I'm not sure. But uh, they had a number of things that didn't sell uh, for some reason. Um, this uh, beautiful uh, piece of lacquer didn't uh, get sold. Uh, the cover lot, which was this bowl, which I thought a lot of. I thought this was just terrific. Beautifully done. Didn't sell. Now, it may be that uh, uh, the estimate was that they felt was a little too aggressive. Maybe some of these things have been offered around on the market and nobody bought them, and, and um, that, that can be the kiss of death for some of these pieces. But in any event, they had some really great things, nonetheless, that did sell. So uh, it wasn't all, all sad news. And uh, one, of the, one of the best pieces in the sale was this Young Low period, uh, extremely rare Islamic market basin. Um, it had been sold by Eskenazi uh, at one point. And it sold at Christie's in Hong Kong in 2006. It was estimated at 12 to 18 million Hong Kong dollars. Here it is. And uh, it did fine. It brought 14 and a half million. Uh, a bit toward the low end of the estimate, 
and uh, which uh, some of these are toward, toward the low end of the estimate, so it makes me wonder if they hadn't overestimated some of them. Um, but this was a, a really lovely example and, uh, uh, you know, a great rarity, certainly. And uh, then there's the, uh, the famous, uh, this is a very famous uh, jar. Um, here it is. Uh, uh, this was the uh, Wutsai uh, fish jar and cover, Jai Jing Markin period, uh, estimate on request, uh, just a beautiful example. This, this jar sold uh, uh, about 15 years ago and actually set the record price in the world for a piece of Chinese porcelain at that time. Um, this time around it brought, uh, well it did very well, it brought 213 million Hong Kong dollars, which is uh, roughly uh, 28 to 30 million uh, dollars U.S. Uh, did uh, 2.86, I think it was. Um, I think it sold for almost uh, uh, 10 times um, what it sold for uh, years ago. But at any rate, um, the, here it is, just a really nice example and uh, perfectly painted and uh, just, uh, you know, it is what it is, as they say. <laughs> All righty. And um, I think that's about it for the sales. But the, this was the, the catalog that sort of flopped, and nobody knows really why. Uh, this beautiful, um, very rare, um, um, let's get over here to this. This, this didn't sell, which uh, surprised me uh, a lot, this Feiwa Lotus vase. It was a beautiful May Ping. It was in perfect, absolutely perfectly potted. They couldn't get it sold. Um, it may sell post-sale. Who knows? They often do. But uh, for now, it didn't. All right, and and that's about it. So we've sort of gone through it. And uh, if you want to, if you want to come and look at the catalogs, come over to the site, Dealers Auctioneers. Click that, and it'll pull it up for you. And you can come and uh, take a look and see what uh, uh, see what else they had. All righty. And uh, sorry, the video went a little long, but I wanted to cover a lot here. And uh, thanks for visiting. And uh, bye bye.